Welcome to the Miss Juneteenth pageant. I will never get over seeing Miss Juneteenth cleaning toilets. <laughs> <laughs> winner of Miss Juneteenth will receive a full scholarship to any historically black institution of your choice. Good luck. I know that you are looking to replicate your success. What's her problem? I beat her. First of all, I do want to say Miss Juneteenth is an amazing, amazing film. I, I'm just in awe with it. I think it's well shot, well written, well produced, well cast, and, and just all of the above. Um, Let's get right to it. So Juneteenth, you know, that's that's coming up in a couple of days. And both of you guys are from Texas. So we already know the history behind it. And you guys explain so perfectly in the film Juneteenth and the connection with Texas. If you can, quickly, just tell me, um, what does Juneteenth mean to you? And Shani, I'll let you go first with that. Oh my gosh, I need Kendrick Sampson to take this because he says, like first. <laughs> yes, he says it so eloquently and so personally, and it always moves me every time he says it. I'm sorry, Kendrick, am I putting you on the spot here? I just <laughs> no, 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 no problem at all. Um, you know, Channing's from, from, we're both from Texas, and, mm -hmm. you know, I grew up in Houston, just not too, not too far from Galveston, where the last slaves were freed um, or informed that they were free. Three years after, everything everything says two years. It was almost three years after the Emancipation Proclamation mm -hmm. was signed. And, you know, in terms of what I, I feel about it is, you know, Juneteenth is a, a, a reminder that when we fight, we win. That we have to take on abolition as a framework for um, activism. That if one person is in bondage, we all are in bondage. You know, it wasn't ever about the person who signed the Emancipation Proclamation. No oppressor ever just benevolently gave us something because they woke up one day and said, yeah, you know. Uh, Let me free some black folks. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, y'all right, we're going to give y'all back y'all freedom. Um, mm -hmm. It was hard fought for, like hardcore radical people that were willing to put their bodies on the line and not just allies, but accomplices, right? People that were willing to put their bodies on the line too and um, in defense of black life and, and freedom. And so, you know, it's a reminder of what, what that fight is, that we have to continue fighting until everybody is free. Um, and, and I think that that, that theme is still uh, of delayed freedom and, and the personal uh, fight for liberation is the theme in Miss Juneteenth, right? And, mm -hmm. and seeing Turquoise navigate these relationships and see in, in imperfect ways, right? Um, allowed to be nuanced, and not allowed to be human like we are not allowed to do uh, most times as black people um, as Hollywood perpetuates these anti-black images of like criminalization and demonization. And then on the other end of the spectrum, we have to be perfect like a hidden figure or like the first person on the moon or you know whatever um, in order to earn the right for our story to be told. And that's you. what you see it is when a black person is given the right to tell their story and have some authority over their own narrative, you see the humanity in us. You see, mm. you know, that in all of the characters. Um, but it's my favorite, it, you know, I grew up knowing uh, Ju uh, July 4th, Independence Day was bullshit because we were, our, our people weren't independent, you know? Right. Um, independence what we celebrate. And so Juneteenth is my favorite and it's got a lot more flavor in culture. So. <laughs> <laughs> you think? <laughs> Shani, what would you like to say about Juneteenth? Because I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned that, um, though, Kendrick, when it comes to, this holiday, which should be a national holiday that everyone should celebrate, not just black folk. Everyone should celebrate this. Um, I have friends that just now learned about Juneteenth. Mm -hmm. You know, just the other day, it was like, I didn't know about this. And it, it kills me that growing up, our teachers didn't teach that. And I don't know, I mean, for you guys being from Texas, it was almost inevitable for you guys to learn about your true history when it comes to your state. Um, oh, absolutely. It was, I think that Juneteenth was, for me, I really wanted to tell this story with the backdrop of Juneteenth because it was the fabric of, you know, of growing up, you know, it was the fabric of my childhood. And, you know, Kendrick has um, laid out Juneteenth so eloquently, but I just, you know, there, so there's not much I can add on that. But 
you know, for me, um, commemorating Juneteenth was always about, you know, acknowledging our ancestors who Kendrick's talked about who were slaves in Texas getting their freedom late. And Kendrick talked about the, the themes in the film. And I think I really wanted to portray thematically that um, Turquoise is on this journey, finding her own sense of freedom, you know, by coming to terms with her own past later in life, you know. And so every one of these characters, I was always a Approaching in a sense that what does freedom mean for each of these folks, mm. even um, for Turquoise, you know, in her journey and finding something of her own for her daughter and being able to um, pursue her dreams in her own way. For um, Kendrick's character, Ronnie, you know, who is seeking to become an entrepreneur in his own right, you know, mm -hmm. we honestly examining freedom in every aspect of the film and what does it mean for Black people? Yeah. Now, Channing, you did start off your career in theater and in acting in front of the camera, mm -hmm. and you made your transition behind mm -hmm. the scenes. I'm wondering what was it for you that got you from being in front to being behind the scenes? It was interesting because I came to cinema in a different sort of way. You know, for a young Black girl in Fort Worth, there really was no um, clear path to cinema. So I started in community theater. There was, a, I can remember, a local theater called Sojourner Truth, um, in which I saw, you know, plays now that I know were complex, you know, um, stories about Black life, like Pearly and For Colored Girls and things like that. And so it inspired me. You know, I, I was fascinated with everything that was happening on stage, and it's it's inspired me to um, want to become an actor. And then once I really got into the field um, and I started doing some, I did a USC thesis film that I can remember and just got really interested in everything that was happening behind the camera. And another thing that I really yearned for, um, part of my cinema education really started in the literary space with just like reading Toni Morrison and Alice Walker and Maya Angelou, Dr. Maya Angelou, I apologize. Um, and all these, prolific, I got to get it right. All these- Got to get it right. <laughs> <laughs> prolific authors, you know, um, and I really would read these multi-layered stories about Black women on their journeys, and it just planted a seed in my head, and I wasn't seeing that, you know, when I started out, you know, trying to become an actor, and um, I knew those stories were in my heart, and I was able to transition to writing, directing, and be able to work with amazing actors like Kendrick Sampson okay. and Nicole <laughs> Bahari, <laughs> and our breakout Alexis Chikese. Yes, and speaking of the cast and, and, and their greatness, I just want to talk about my favorite part of the film. There's so many different components that I love about it. I love when I see the hot comb up here. I love when I just see little nuances that just happen where I'm like, oh, this, so, this feels so real and authentic. Um, and being, you guys both being from Texas, I, I'm sure the authenticity obviously is there. Y'all brought it. Um, the scene where... Ronnie and Turquoise dance in the bar when he cut right <laughs> something about that scene is so beautiful to me and it's so it's so soft it's so vulnerable it's so loving like it's, it's the epitome of black love to me and I think for for me when I what jumped off the the, the screen was when he took off that head wrap and, and she was just like, you know, vulnerable at that moment, but he's, he's loving her and just telling her, child, you are beautiful. Um, what I love about it too, is that people outside of just our culture, I feel like it's so important, Kendra, you mentioned it earlier, how they need to see us differently in a different light. I feel like being black, you're automatically labeled as strong, strong black man, strong black woman. And yes, we're strong, but we're also soft, we're also vulnerable, we're so so dimensional in so many different ways that it's important for them to see us like that. And I just think even in that shot, it, it was so beautiful and, and it was portrayed so well. So that's my favorite. I don't know. I wonder with you guys, how do you feel? Like what was your favorite scene to shoot and um, story to tell in the movie? <laughs> I know that was a lot. Sorry, but I had to get that. I was like, I have to tell them this scene is everything to me. Well, Kendrick's thinking about it. That was one of my favorite scenes too, you know, and um, it was also one of my favorite scenes to be able to, um, you know, add music to um, because we actually, you know, played a different song, which we didn't have the rights to, you know, <laughs> when, they were, when they were going through, you know, that scene. But um, 
I, I definitely, I definitely see the beauty in that scene as well. And I understand, you know, why I touched you because I was there and I was like, whoa, you know, and as a director, like even being in the editing room, I kept getting in trouble because I was making that scene as long as I could, you know, oh, we appreciate <laughs> I you. I wanted to stay in that scene. You know? mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I was about to say, I, <laughs> what I was actually about to say is that's one of Channing's favorites too, because she definitely... Um, I mean, she put love into all of the all of the scenes, but uh, that one in particular with the lighting and you know everything, she was very, very particular about how she wanted that scene to be shot and 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 how and 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 how she wanted it to look and feel um, and how much freedom she wanted us to have. Um, but um, you know, that's a hard one to to, to pick. I, I don't know. Uh, that one was one of my favorite too. I like the intimacy of it, and I like the vulnerability of it. Um, <clears throat> and it's one of the points where you can see Ronnie loves hard. Like Ronnie is a. Mm-hmm. We all know Ronnie. You know, I, <laughs> sometimes I am Ronnie. Uh, you know, uh, but you know, Ronnie misses the mark. But Ronnie loves hard, and and um, and it's genuine. Um, it's just you know not always. Uh, uh, it's nuanced, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, very <laughs> and, much. Um, and and that is something that I, I love in that scene. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and that scene is just so dependent on the casting, you know, like we were just able to cast in a way, we cast characters literally based on, you know, ca- actors that could bring that nuance. And so, and you know, I love as a director, like being able to let um, actors sit in moments and you have mm. to have, actors who can do that and you know with Nicole and Kendrick that was a no-brainer you know and so so much of that is them you know just bringing themselves to that moment and and you just it's palpable you just feel the love between them so this is one of my favorites too that's why I was just clutching my pearls (laughs) (laughs) you was like she gets it yes (laughs) talk to me about the casting and and the cast and getting that together how was that process for you when you saw as writing, as you was writing this, did you have Nicole Bahari in mind? Did you have Kendrick in mind? Did you guys know each other prior being from Texas? Like, no, of- no, we didn't know each other prior. But, you know, one of the things is I really, I don't, when I write, I don't have, you know, specific actors in mind because I want to bring the truth of the character forward. Mm-hmm. And then I want to create a space so that the actors can, you know, bring all their talents to the role, all their abilities, um, but also themselves in a way, you know, so the character gets reshaped, you know. And um, Nicole has this ability, she's a brilliant actor, and she has this ability to bring this um, grace and dignity that she brought to Turquoise. And so, um, and I really was looking for um, someone who could carry the emotional journey of Turquoise, the disappointment, the hurt of navigating these lost dreams. But most important, you know, the love for her, you see the love for her daughter and also the joy and literally for Ronnie was the hardest who play, who Kendrick plays was the hardest character for me to cast because I loved that character so much and I knew wow. you know I was writing turquoise from this perspective of a black woman in the south but I knew in writing Ronnie you know it would be so much the actor would have to bring so much of his own nuance to that character to lift it off the page because he has the perspective of being a black man in America and more specifically a black man from Houston Texas you know mm-hmm. we were making a Texas story and so I was so so um, when I saw Kendrick in that role, just all everything lit up, you know, in my in my brain, just all yes. the whistles went off, and I went, "Oh my gosh, this is Ronnie!" You know, I can't. <laughs> you know, and, and I had seen him, you know, in in so many other things, and w- wanted to work with him at so point, some point, you know, and was honored to have him consider it. But he's an actor that brings um, nuance and humanity to everything that he does, you know, and he's very much a an activist and an amazing human being, and he brings that to his roles. And I was just really grateful to have him bring that to Miss Juneteenth because. I I told him that, that I told you this, you know, during the production. I really feel like that he lifted that role off wow. the page. 
Wow. Oh, thank Andrew, you. <laughs> I mean, now I got to get to you, brother. I, that was the question, so that's a great transition. Off the page, when you did see the script, what was it about that character, Ronnie, that jumped out to you that made you say, I have to be a part of this? And how did you prepare? Who did you pull inspiration from? Um, well, uh, <laughs> I, you know, I... I, like I said, I know Ronnie, you know, I have Ronnie's yeah. in my family. I have, um, like I said, I am Ronnie sometimes, you know, I ain't got no kids, but, uh, <laughs> but, you know, I, I understood who Ronnie was and I thought it would be an honor to, to portray, um, a black man from Texas, um, that, was different than Nathan, you know, um, cause Nathan was from, is from Houston, um, and insecure and, and that was an honor, especially, you know, dealing with mental health issues and such, which I'm hugely passionate about, but just all, um, all of us have trauma. Right. And, and there's like, there's something specific about hood folks from Texas and and mixture of a little bit of country folk. Uh, it's been, <laughs> this is Fort Worth, right? So it's not just like you know. I know everybody outside of Texas thinks that everybody country, and you know we just in 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 the boonies somewhere. Um, but like the the inner city hood um, black folks are different than the out the suburb or you know um, folks that 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 are country. Um, and then there's like hood country and there's like, there's like so many, it's nuanced. Right. Yeah. And, and I, like I said, I know Ronnie, I know I got brothers that are Ronnie. I got, you know, um, and, and I wanted to honor Ronnie. I wanted to, to have the chance to, um, show that, that nuance. I wanted to, to, you know, show that there is, the humanity in it is is that again you can't be a black man person uh, trans women sister or whatever uh -huh. you cannot be black in America without experiencing a level of trauma and having generational trauma inform how you operate right and so there's a lot of um, there's a lot of in their relationship in turquoise and Ronnie's relationship and in his relationship with his daughter, a lot of um, uh, challenges and a lot of you can pick up the even in, with turquoise. I think there's like I, I was saying this in another interview. There's a there's a a unwritten villain, right? That there's a, a villain of of white supremacy and capitalism and such that is informing how they live and how they navigate and how and the rejection of the of of the competition um um and and what the win really is in the end um for turquoise and and her daughter and um and what the win is for ronnie and and you know that it's that it's not a tragedy that it is an inspirational there is a seeking of liberation um, from these, you know, systems. And that's how I see it. I'm like, I see liberation in that, that black men can see themselves portrayed in this way and hopefully connect and see, uh, how Ronnie navigates and there's some humanity in it and there's no real judgment on him on my part. Um, so that, so that, I could display that humanity and honor that and hopefully people can connect to it and have some sort of healing in it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and so that is, you know, anytime I see, I, I, I don't subscribe to, you know, people saying that we don't, we shouldn't have stereotypes and such. It's, it's who's telling the story and why they're telling the story, right? Mm. Uh, the stereotype isn't necessarily if they're hood, if they got gold teeth, they got, you know, all that stuff. The stereotype is how that is told. I will wear gold teeth. I like tattoos and, you know, I ain't got none because I don't like needles. But, um, <laughs> but I think that all of us have a uh, deserve for our stories to be told and none of us are better than each other. Yeah. Um, that it's how you tell that story about that person um, more than the physical aspects of that person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mm -hmm. totally get that. 
even with the film, um, Kendrick being like, uh, Ken, not Kendrick, I'm sorry, Ronnie. Ronnie not being a bad guy, but I can see how somebody wants to tag him as that. But I think what I love about this film is that you humanize all of these characters. And it's even with Nicole's character, Turquoise, finding out that she was on that pole. <laughs> that was a shocker for me. But you didn't necessarily visually expose that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, um, just creatively, what made you not necessarily go there? And was that because of just a personal director's perspective? Or mm -hmm. it was just some of the, the, the difficulties with creating this film, with having to tell so many different nuances, as you guys put it. Yeah, I love the way that you've watched the film. Like, this is such a fresh and new interview. <laughs> really? Um, I really watched the film, like, about three times, actually. <laughs> I, I can totally tell. But, you know, like Kendrick is saying, we really were going for, you know, I, I really believe all the characters. I, I think as a writer-director, I don't approach anything as black and white. You know, I'm always looking exactly. for the shades, the shades of gray and the humanity, you know, yes. and work that Kendrick has highlighted, you know? And um, for me, I really needed, even in not, like we have a couple of flashbacks of Turquoise, you know, when she was the former Miss Juneteenth, mm -hmm. but we really didn't stay in that space because we really wanted to be able to tell this present day story about where she is now so that we can see, you know, her journey and being able to step forward and have these realizations, you know, in real time, we needed to stay with her in those moments. So that's why I wasn't really flashing back to those moments. And I was constantly asking, you know, um, how relevant is that to where Turquoise is? And, you know, for me, that conversation that she and Kai have in the bar, you know, about Kai and, and their, you know, her discovery of that fact was just, it just was, it was a thing that is, it didn't define, you know, who she is as a woman today, it's what she did, you know, to feed her child. And mm. she expresses that, you know? And so it's just one of, another one of those things that is just painting it as, as shades of gray, you know? Yes. Everyone had it too, from the mom, one day talk about you dealing with devil music, then you see her in the club drinking, <laughs> dragged up. Like, I was like, oh my God, no one's perfect, you know? And, yes. and to me, that's, human being life no one is perfect right one, Ronnie is there one minute he's late showing or didn't show up one minute you know turquoise mm -hmm. is fighting and, and working these jobs overnight and then you find out yeah she twerked on the side as well you know and then but the way you shot it the way you did it and wrote and, and wrote it it wasn't any judgment I didn't feel any different about turquoise but, but I think that's a reflection of true life I feel like people do ultimately feel you know judgment towards a, a a woman that's that's that took that path in life and what you did you did humanize it and you said you know what you didn't find that out till towards the end of the film but you loved her prior so why should it change now and I think you did that damn near with every character so great thank job you, thank you so much I think one of the things that turquoise and that I love about turquoise and Ronnie's relationship is the thing that they have in common despite you can you can feel you know the history their history you can also feel their baggage, but what they have in common is their love for their for their daughter and um, you're seeing them um, you know act that out as parents in different ways. Like another question I was always asking was how do these characters parent and that was driving the decisions for the film. You know how does Turquoise parent? How does Ronnie parent? And at different moments like you've highlighted, you know so effectively is you know you're seeing the yin and yang of that, you know, the positive and negative of both, you know, both are just trying to love this child. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, uh, Kendrick, you mentioned earlier about the win. Um, for you guys, what was the, uh, what's the ultimate win with, with this film for you that you want people to walk away with? What's, what's the win for you guys? I mean, I, so one of the wins is, is that non-judgment, you know, I, 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 I know, um, I know people who have, who are strippers, who were strippers, um, who are sex workers, who, who you know, um, and, and who did some who decided to do it because they wanted to do it. Some who were trafficked into it and, and, um, and there's no judgment on that. There's no judgment on those who have been, um, in locked up. Um, there's no judgment on those who have had run-ins with law enforcement who 
have troublesome relationships with their, their children um, and problematic, you know, habits and such. I think that that is a win because, um, you know, we're taught, we're also taught to characterize ourselves and our culture yes. um, as, as, as there are problematic things in our culture. Don't get me wrong, but mm-hmm. we're taught to, to talk about the physical aspects of it or the hustle of it or whatever, or the survival of it and uh, in, in the actions that people take to survive um, as, as shame. And, and, um, and we like to judge, we, we like to judge our community sometimes harsher than other people do. Right. right. Um, and, <laughs> and something that I love, like, you know, I, in, in Spanish, a lot of people, for example, I don't want to get too far off topic, but in Spanish, a lot of people uh, are, when they're speaking Spanish, they like to say, you know, you should speak like it is from Spain, like right? how they speak in Spain, because that's the original Spanish. But they're the white folks, they're the colonizers, right? Um, I When I was learning Spanish, I'm like, I don't want to sound nothing like the colonizers. I, you know, when the countries that I'm going to and talking to people that I want to talk to um, are not going to respond to me. I don't want no British person coming up into my neighborhood and being like, well, I think that you should, you know, and trying to tell me what, what and trying to help. I just, I, that's not what I want. I want, I love our culture. I love the way we sound. I love the way the inflections that we have. I love our accents and how they're different than, white folks, even if we're in close proximity to each other, they're, they're African, there's African influence and there's um, um, a survival influence. Like the food that we have, um, all of that culture was born out of resistance and, a, and proof that when we fight, we win, right? Yeah. And, and, and I, I love all of that and all of our nuances and all of our humanity, flaws and all, um, I am in love with our culture, right? Um, and so many of us have these stories with these, um, uh, I don't even like to say flawed, but nuanced past, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and and uh, that have all different types of colors and they make us who we are. And I love that this story highlights that. And I also love that, you know, we're not made to be perfect, but also in the end, we... Uh, uh, turquoise and and I keep on forgetting Alexis's character's name. Kai. Kai. <laughs> turquoise and Kai reject this uh, colonized, you know, uh, competition that has been that we've mm-hmm. taken on, right? Mm-hmm. That that, sh- that that makes us define um, ourselves by certain things, like even Juneteenth. You know, n- no offense to anybody who who goes into that pageant, but we have to think really about what that pageant means and what we are exemplifying within that pageant and what Juneteenth actually means. And if those are cohesive, right? What are we fighting for in liberation? Um, and, and, and I like the fact that they are liberated through that process of, of finally succumbing to this competition, but then coming out of it, realizing what the real win is, right? What the real goal is. Um, and that, you know, Turquoise rejects so much. Her life is not defined by any man or any relationship and, mm-hmm. and, and, or any business or, you know, whatever. She's like, this is what we need. This is what's important in life. And we're going to move forward towards that. And she's just, that should be framed as just as successful as any like hidden figure or, you know, um, um, first to be whatever. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Shannon, for you. I guess what would you what would you want people to walk away with when it comes to this film? I mean, it's interesting because we're at such an interesting time, and you know, mm-hmm. for the film to be released as it is, and none of us, um, we we obviously have been living with these traumas that have been happening in our community for such a long time, but you know, none of us could have foreseen this the specificity of this moment, you know. So it's a bittersweet time even to release the film because you know I'm constantly. We all are constantly asking each other, how are you doing? You know, yes, yes. Um, individually yes. every day, you know, um, I would, my hope is that in this story, 
that this story will be amplified because it's another Black story about the humanity of Black folks. And then it will open doors for more um, human stories about Black folks to be told. So, you know, I don't have, um, Kendrick has said it so all so eloquently, so I'm going to be brief here. But, you know, I just, um, I'm glad to see the story making its way out into the world. And, you know, a small part of me um, is hopeful that it will give, that give all the folks that are watching it a bit of hope themselves. Mm, thank you. I love that. Well, I know we're short on time. I could keep going, but we're just going to end this um, right now. I really appreciate you guys being here, Kendrick, um, Shani. Y'all continue to fight the good fight. Tell your stories and, and fight for us through your art and creativity. Same thing with you, Kendrick. And you keep being on the front lines. I see you out there. I know that tear gas is crazy, but we appreciate you. We appreciate you both. So thank you for being here. Thank you for having us. Thank you. You're thank welcome. You. Thank you for having us. Thanks.